All right, welcome back to the Pumpernickel Podcast. Pumpernickel! Pumpernickel. <laughs> um, well, I guess we'll just jump straight into it. Uh, a little bit of what we talked about last week got cut off, but we're probably rehashing it in a later episodes, so that's not a big deal. Yeah, we but, had some quote-unquote technical difficulties. Yeah, but yeah, and quote-unquote being Nate as the technical difficulty. Don't, don't but, put that on me. <laughs> it was 100% you. But... <laughs> He also has an excellent question that he just brought up, so let's just jump straight in. There's no other... We ain't got no abs to read yet. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't got no that level yet. This message is brought to you by TurboTax. <laughs> like, nah, <laughs> one day. TurboTax is not actually sponsored. No. Nah, oh, yeah. True facts. They're not our sponsors Also, yet. don't use TurboTax because them niggas is trash. Oh, well, have some respect for TurboTax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you fucking with our bread, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the future look like. But I don't care, but yeah. Bro, if TurboTax hit us with a stack, I would wear a TurboTax shirt. <laughs> TurboTax get, tattoo? Got, got a tattoo on my back, man. They saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> TurboTax ain't just software. It'll save your life. <laughs> got me out that Wesley Snipes. <laughs> oh, don't do that. All right, that was foul. <laughs> Let's get straight to the question. All right, so this was brought to me by my future sister-in-law, Megan. Megan. So if you were a bum, where would you go? And her thought was, and she made a solid argument for a gym. Because it's like basically a dollar a day for a toilet and a shower. Oh, I thought you meant like where you going to go like worldwide. I didn't know if you Oh, were... that's also going to happen. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, that, that's phase two. I have kind of <laughs> thought about this before. I was like, if everything fell through and I had to be homeless, I would probably be homeless. Um, I would be homeless in a place where there were opportunities. You know what I mean? Because my in my in my head, like, I feel like I'd be on my feet again, and I'm not the type to just sit there and be a bum for the next. Well, I mean, years like, let's, let's, I mean, like, none no. of us are the type to just be a bum. Right. right. I'm, I'm saying, you're, I'm saying, you're forced to be a bum now. No, you permanently have to be a bum. Yeah. Permanently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. You, you, yeah, okay. you, a professional bum. You're a professional bum. How you, bum. how you manage? You it. with like the the knapsack and the steak over my shoulder. Yeah. Like, walking from trade. Where would a, that's a harder go? Somebody else go. That's a harder question. Cause. Yeah. So I'm saying you have a PhD in bumming. <laughs> my degree is your doctor bum. <laughs> Not to be like, uh, oh god, not to give the stereotypical answer, uh huh. But I, I default to Mexico. That's easy. That's enough. fair. That's easy enough. Like, I, I've, I've gone down there, like, you know, there's not money down there, but people somehow always manage to throw a party. Right? That's always true. Eat food. How does that happen? I don't know. I don't know how that shit happens. <laughs> yeah. We got plenty of relatives who do not work and somehow manage to always throw a party when I show up. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm not, and I'm not paying for food. Like, right, I stopped right, doing it right. ages ago. Like, I'm about to say, Cause like five bucks in Mexico is like a a, a fucking Barbaritos uh, platter on the table for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's a piece of unfranchised dollar. <laughs> yeah, bro, five U.S. dollars in Mexico go a long way for food. That or like a uh, or France. I think isn't that the one that's got like a squatting law where you're able to like just break into an apartment building and then like what? squat? Really? And they can't kick you out? Really? So that's Spain. It's one of them European countries. It's one of them European countries. Wherever that is, you just made a valid argument to never live for that place. What? Well, oh, oh, if you own a, if you own property there, yeah. You, you, you literally get But I think the squatting thing is, <laughs> is it, the squatting thing ain't, I don't think the squatting thing is just somebody just busts your glass and they walk in and fix a sandwich. <laughs> I think it's like if the house is abandoned, right, then the you house can is do abandoned, that. You can just take it oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you were saying like it's a fire extinguisher, you break the glass and it's yours. Damn, no, 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 no. Boom, I live here now. <laughs> first off, I would, the first thing I'm doing is hopping on the next thing, smoking, and going to well, Spain. I'm saying, there's not many uh, like jobs in Spain, and I know there's a right. property that got built that isn't actually being yeah because Europe's suffering from that whole high uh, unemployment right yeah like yeah. They're, they're yeah they're, all these young professionals just don't have a job don't have jobs yeah. uh, where would I go if I was a professional do you do the, old, the super old school hop on a train and just let it ride I think I would I hear that gets I hear that gets bad after time I watched this documentary about part of that I think I'd go to Panama if I, were, if I had to do it for the rest of my life, I'd probably go somewhere where you could just do it for the rest of your life. Can you, uh, can you have contact with like family and friends and stuff like that? You don't have a cell phone. I mean, you have a, yeah, I'd go to Panama because my, my grandma's down there. Like, yeah, I always got resources for a while at least. So, yeah. you're, you're living the bum life, so you ain't got a whole lot of stuff. That's a hard question. You gotta be a, you bums? have to be the bum. For bums, the rest of bums, have, like, bums have their own Twitter accounts and stuff. <laughs> you bring up a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you it's get too easy to find a bum on Twitter. Yeah, so that, 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 he's like, nigga, you bro, excuse me? <laughs> like, no, bum. I take it back. I take it back. Mike brought up a very good point. What? Like, so not to say that poor people here have it, don't have it rough, because they do. They a lot of people do. have it rough. Correct. But 
Public libraries are still a thing. Like people, I've also seen homeless people with Nikes, and I do not see that in Mexican homeless people. You got a fact. Because there's a, I see the same homeless guy all the time, and he's always got different clothes on. Yeah. And they're not like the best, but they're they're decent. He ain't homeless, man. Yeah. No. Yeah. He, that dude ain't There are some people, though, that are like, handler. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Trying to be like, I'm homeless, and then they like, yeah. Hopping their Tesla so around the corner at the end of the night. Additional of rules with that. So you can't generate any kind of revenue if you only can't panhandle. Well, no, I guess panhandling works. You just, you just don't have like a fixed address. Oh, so it's just defined as not having a fixed So, so you can have a job. So, no, no. Uh, okay. So you could panhandle, but not have to where you make like a serious income. Right. You make like 10 grand a year, 15 grand a year. Oh, uh, with no home and 15 grand and you ain't got no other expenses. That's really not like terrible. That's what I'm saying. The U.S. is the rest of that box. Buy a Camaro with it. <laughs> Live in the Camaro. Live in the Camaro. And you buy like a nice little tent, you set up your little down house down underneath the interstate. You start living the good life. Start drinking the <laughs> the Mad Dog 2020 to keep you warm at night. Oh, oh no. Holy <laughs> shit. That went down the door. What kind of bum wine? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a bum wine connoisseur if I was a bum. Yeah, you were. I'd go in there, I'd like pour it, like in a, give it a swirl, a sniff it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> What did he buy with his first check? A wine yeah. glass. The methylated contents. Mm. 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 I can really taste the yeah. grapes in this one. <laughs> oh. Really taste the, yeah, the denatured agents. The denatured agents. Mm. Um, Damn, I, I think I'd head to the woods. Nah, I ain't doing that. I ain't bumming in the woods. Well, it depends though. on what kind of woods we're talking about. We're I don't mean like the middle of Central Park. Behind Walmart. I would do it in the middle of Central Park before I did it in the real woods. Central Park is dangerous as shit. No, it's not. Is Central Park New York? This ain't, this ain't New York in the 80s anymore, bro. Have you been to Central Park recently? In the daytime. In the daytime? In the daytime. Yeah, <laughs> night. I guess you, you don't have to fight for bum real free. estate. I'm about to say, you know what? I did not step foot into the Central Park at night. I, I, stood, I went around it. And yeah, mine, mine, mine was down. during the day, though, in all fairness. Yeah, I met at night. Oh, at... I mean, I guess the other... Yeah, you gotta deal with other bums. Yeah, you gotta keep yeah. out your turf. Establish... Well, start you stab a bum at 3 a.m. and then people realize you'll leave that one alone. Like, stab the crazy bum too. Like walk up to the random crazy bum that everybody fears and slit that nigga shit. I'm just peeing in a circle. He's a it's bum. Anybody, anybody <laughs> <who's> <laughs> in this this shit? But you also have to remember there's that crazy pigeon lady from Home Alone 2 in Central Park. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I don't know where to bum. I don't know where to prefer. Oh man, I forgot. When I said woods, I mean like the middle of America, like Montana type of shit. I'm not oh, doing dude. it in no Montana. I'd rather fight other bums than wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have to fight bums daily, like Fight Club, than have to deal with the wolves in Montana, bro. Yeah, uh, humans are more like as a target that you can. I'm not Liam Neeson. <laughs> Maybe I did not factor in the wolves properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably you didn't factor in them wolves and them grizzlies, bro. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> elk. You can beat up another human being. I don't know about a wolf. Man, you can fuck up a bum, bro. Frail and, and malnutrition. But so are you. But eventually you'll become I mean, violent. eventually you'll become that, but that's why you start off with violence. <laughs> or are you become the king of the bums like Recess? You could become... <laughs> you could become the... Uh, king Bob? King Bob of bums. King Bob. Can you, okay, so we're talking, we're talking about wolves. Could you punch out a baby bear? A baby bear? Yeah, like a little like newborn bear. Yeah. You, you take out you a baby bear? Yeah, yeah, you can right you can right hook a baby bear. I thought you meant like a fool. If you right, if I ever right hook and knock out a bear, you can't tell me shit. I'm walking into anybody's <laughs> company and being like, I own this now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like where'd you come from? I just knocked out that'd be on my that would literally be on my resume. That's I might put that as a joke on my resume. In that's the that's all it says. Yeah, right. Once knocked out a bear with a mean right hook. <laughs> it's like you know what we need that kind of grit. We can need that kind of grit in our company. Yeah, we need he's that, grizzled. We need that confidence. Yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> grizzled. He's grizzled. You just run out in the woods and just yell, "World star!" <laughs> <laughs> you suck a bunch of grizzlies. Look off the bear. You hit the bear so hard, the other bears start like, "Oh, turn this phone sideways." <laughs> Why is a bear on a phone? Don't worry about all that. We talking about knocking out bears. Bone too. Damn, that got derailed. All right, next question. <laughs> oh man, I don't know if we do even establish where we're going. No, no, bro, I don't have a real answer to no, that, that was, question. That's that a tough, tough one. one. Well, no, I mean, like, um, if, if I was gonna, if I was gonna be a bum, I would, one, I would stay in the U.S. Um, and, I mean, like, there's, there's a bunch of places that you could just, uh, uh, roam around to. Like, if I was, if I was still, like, connected to technology, I would, I uh, bum. hit up a public library and use their computers during the day. Um, Hotel lobbies have free AC. Yeah. Uh, 
I think that, that's what this was more geared towards, like the, the sadness of what are you going to look for. Yeah. Right. right, right. Uh, um, I mean, there's there's dollar menus all over the fucking place. Hey, so, I mean, calendar for free pancake day and I... That's the whole thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> National Pancake Day. Yeah, yeah, National Pancake too. You got to be, when you're a bum, you got to optimize all restaurant free days. Yeah. Also, okay. as a bum, like, people forget how, because there are people who do it and they're not homeless. We forget how much food gets just thrown out. That's so true. a lot of people, like, literally just go grocery shopping in trash cans. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. or, I mean, like, if you were, uh, if you're cool with, like, the, the, the night shift people at yeah, a lot yeah. of places that, like, just dump out food at the end of the night, uh, shit, there was a, it was a Dunkin' Donuts by one of my schools where it was just like, hey, if you come in and you buy like a donut or something, at the end of the night, he was like, look, we're going to throw out, we going to throw out the rest of these. Do you want some? Yeah, let me get this, 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 this. Cool. I got a whole baker's dozen and I, I bought one. Yeah. Right. Because the rest of these are going in the trash. So True. what do they care? Yeah, they don't give a fuck. So it's just like, I mean, if you, if you know how to do that, you know the right places to go. You can, I mean, you can have some leftover food to last you the rest of the day and the next day and... Keep on trucking. Yeah. The only thing I care about in the whole bum thing is being able to stay clean. Yeah. Like, I, that's I mean, the like, only part that really bothered me. The, not, the lack of a home doesn't really fit. I think that's why she, she recommended the gym. Yeah, it's a 24-hour shower. Right. Yeah. Which is a pretty solid argument, I must admit. Yeah, I, and I mean, like, you know... Or living in shipping containers. Not shipping containers, but living in, like, UPS. Not UPS, but the... Storage containers? Yeah, storage containers, yeah. Yeah. People, ah. people actually do that. Like, what, do the, what does a storage container cost? It's like eight bucks. No, no it's more than that. It's like no, it's 20, more. 30 bucks a month. It's probably like, yeah, like 20, 30. Because you can get the smallest one. You can get the air conditioned one, like 30 bucks a month. Yeah, something like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. They're not yeah, expensive. Just, but the small ones are like, It's just illegal to live in it. You yeah. can't live in them because for all intents and purposes, they're not uh, They're not zoned. To but no housing. one's going to come in there checking. Well, sometimes, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so like, long as you're not like... There all the time, right? Yeah, and get caught. You, yeah, yeah, you can't like you know put a couch in there and keep your feet up. So, but if, let's well, say you can put a couch in there, you just can't. You just can't be loud. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you have like a normal house, but you also have a storage space. You just want to get weird because you're like you're tired of your house. You want to live sleep in your storage space for a night. Is that illegal? I mean, if you do it for it a night, you might, no one's gonna like yeah, no one's gonna, yeah, if you do it for a night, no one's gonna catch you. Yeah, especially that if you have like an, an actual home address. That's right, what I mean, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, you just did it to see what it was like. Yes. Yeah, then they They'd be like, all right, you're weird, but you know, just just don't fucking do this again. I tried to do that at one point. I tried to sleep in my car for a night to see what it was like. Oof, bruh. I mean, I've just done that before just because. Yeah, I was just like, well, how does this feel? And I was like. No, it's all done that. It was when it was really cold outside and I was drunk and I needed warm. <laughs> I uh I went to go visit uh some quote unquote family at one point and uh they didn't let me in the house and it was like Christmas Eve and I was like all right wait real. hold on what kind of fucking Scrooge McDuck yeah, that's funny <laughs> see it's a serious thing the cold nature yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what they didn't let you in the house nah I uh I don't fucking to this day I still don't fucking know do you but, talk uh, to them at all no. I would never talk to them again nah yeah. uh so I uh um I spent the night. Uh, outside of my mom's minivan, like with it, like turned on with the heat on. Jesus. Hold on, I'm confused. I'm picturing you tapping on the glass at Tiny Tim and they're giving you the finger. <laughs> <laughs> so they just told you you couldn't be there. Yeah, pretty much. Dude, that's rude. That's wild. Not fucking. That's not okay. No, no, it's not. I'm super I, uh, confused. I am the confused. So what was the. I just got. I'm curious now. So what was the conversation? You were just like, were you in the house at one point earlier? No, no. I. I I got up there, uh-huh. was trying to get in. It what was time like, of day is it? It was like it was like eight nine p.m. Wait, or some and, shit and like you that. You were invited by your friend, huh? No, 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 no. So like, um, I was. My mom was staying with uh, this other family member at the time, and um, I came up there to like visit her and my brothers for Christmas or whatever. And yeah. like, it wasn't her house. So, but like, I was trying to come in, uh, and like, the chick was just like, "Nah, like you, just, I don't want him in my house." I'm just like. And you're like, your brothers and stuff were in there. Yeah. I was just like... You still let you in. Yeah. I was just oh, like... Yeah. All right, whatever. It's cool. I mean, you uh, guys the women just... So I, uh... <laughs> I stayed outside of my mom's minivan, and then, uh... All right, that just, that just got weird. I hopped on a fucking... <laughs> hopped on the train the next day and went home. Damn. Damn. That's, uh... Fuck that shit. Yeah. If you, if you listen to the podcast, it's probably not. Fuck you. 
Uh, I'm going 100% <laughs> oh, yeah. that statement. Particularly you, you, you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> and anybody like you, to be honest. <laughs> That I endorse that statement. Yeah, that's wild. That's insane, man. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm gonna do some silly shit in life, but yeah, no, like I mean, like it was it was pretty fucking chill. Like, uh, like the mini man was pretty fucking comfortable. So I mean, like the he was pranked and I I had a good night's sleep. That's wild. I was con- I was concerned about why I had to sleep in the fucking mini man, but like once I got to sleep, like it was a and good this night. Is Philly, right? Yeah, this is Philly. If Philly the winter. city of brotherly love. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. my yeah. ass. My- <laughs> Yeah. Random side, but not to discourage any Philly. Philly sucks. That's like, <laughs> yes. It, it's like it has the attitude of New York, but not New York. You know, it's just like the people there have the same level, if, at least in my perceptions in the time that I've been there. It's like the people have that New York attitude where it's like, go, 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 and like, F you. But the city blows. And then the city's not even big. No. Like, yeah, Philly is not a big city. Like, it was, if I remember right, it was not but a couple miles. And I was just like, oh, okay, so this is the whole city that I've been hearing so much about? Never been, but never hear good things from people. I'm, no one ever says good things. That, I don't know. That I, I know never about. Good things. Yeah, like, I've, I've been to Philly several times. I was in Philly for uh, a three-month stint. And I, I felt out of place, not because I wasn't from Philly, but because... I was happy and everyone else around me was. Right. Yeah. And like, I'm walking around like, you know, like I came up there to visit my family. Like we were laughing, having a good time. And like, I was looking around at everybody else. Everybody else just looked fucking miserable. Let me ask you a question. What's up? What was the sky like in what, Philly? Was it gray? Was it gray? <laughs> this uh, I mean, on certain days, yes. You know, because there's certain parts of Atlanta that you go to where you feel like the happiness is getting sucked out of Well, are we, are we going to have a bankhead conversation? I'm just, saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, when I drive to like old Austell or like an old part, like when you go to somewhere yeah. old, all of a sudden, Places have energy, light I just like, it starts to, like color, the yeah. color starts to not, they stop being yeah. light. You know what's weird to me is, is uh, Lawrenceville gives me that. Not like a negative. I mean, like Lawrence. Like pl- I always tell people, like places have an energy, they have a feeling, and <laughs> boring as shit. Lawrenceville makes me tired, and the, I, I know I'm in Lawrenceville. I don't even have to. I could be in a car and somebody drive it, and I'll start yawning, and it's just like, what is going on? And I look out the window, Lawrenceville, Lawrenceville, <laughs> Lawrence, like Lawrence, Lawrenceville. <laughs> <I'm all right. laughs> but it's true. Like I, I told Bill that because Bill lives out there. Shout out to William Fruit Boot. Fruit Boot. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I told him the same thing. I was like, Lawrenceville just has this energy about it, and and other places that I've been in the state are the same way. But it's just it makes you tired sometimes, or some places are happy. You know, everything yeah. has an energy. Man, you experience that, dude? Because I, I definitely I do. I work over by Six Flags, and that area isn't that nice. Six Flags is the, gives me the same feeling. It's that like South Austell region. Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, like I watched the news one day at work, and it was like they showed like a mass shooting, oh, and it was at the. About apartment complex is like a half mile up the road. I yeah, that's not... Like, you don't want to see that. Fulton Industrial is the same Yeah. Way. Don't do that to Fulton Industrial. No, nah, bro. You want to walk around at night at Fulton Industrial? So this is a club oh, okay. called Club <laughs> Wax at Fulton Industrial. You want to go to Fulton Industrial? Nah, dog. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Nah, big dog. That's where you get interviews for porn sites. That's where you have those sketchy hookers at night. I'm down for some hook, for some hooks. Hooks. You know how hooks. I, you know how I found that out one day. I was in I was in high school and our like social studies teacher or like what was it? European studies, AP European <laughs> studies. I'm not gonna name names. That's but, racist. Uh, I think you teach. I think you learn that. But he he drove through Fort Industrial, and then one morning he told us because he'd get there like six a.m. right to school. Yeah. yeah. And he lives in like uh in uh, Buckhead, and he would drive through like Fort Industrial, and he said one day he's like we we're talking about how. Prostitutes and hookers frequent Fulton Industrial. Uh-huh. And he goes, wait, you guys are you guys talking about Fulton Industrial Boulevard? We're like, yeah. It's like, is that what those women are at night? <laughs> like, and he oh. really clanked in his head why there are women at like five o'clock exactly. in the window waving at him. Hey, hello! <laughs> yeah. I should get off the streets. It's cold out here. I mean, he was he was he was, a, party? He was an older white man, but uh-huh. yeah, like, would you like a ride home, miss? <laughs> right. <laughs> We used to give my teacher a first grade a ride to school. Well, you drove in the first grade? Yeah. No, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? You said, you said we in the first grade used to give our teacher a ride to school. No, it, when I was in the first grade, we, as in like my mom, would give our teacher a ride, my first grade teacher a ride to school. Okay. Us. Like we'd see him waiting at the bus stop to go to school and be like, all right, fuck it, just jump in. And so that became a thing. 
where my first grade teacher would jump in. Mr. Clark. I wonder if he's still around. But, Teacher's uh, pet. Yeah, I was kind of a square back then, too. Back then? I was also a good student, so, it didn't, so grades were definitely high. And it was even better considering the fact that we were giving this man a ride to school. Well, so. he can't fail you if you're riding to school. Hell no. I'm mad at me. a car ride date. My parents in the front talking, and this nigga give me an L at school all day. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like ifs. Did you ever get into a fight in, like, elementary school, middle school, high school? Yes, yes. I did. Kindergarten, I got into a scrap. Me and the dude squared up, and he knew a thing that I didn't know, which is that nuts hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked me in the testicles, and it was the first time I'd ever felt them. <laughs> and I literally blacked out. Like, literally. Like, I hit the ground and woke up, and I was still, like, on the hill. Cedar Grove has this hill, and back when you were a kid, it might as well have been a mountain. And we we squared up at the top of that hill, bro, and that nigga knocked me smooth out with that net with that uh nut hit and I woke up and I had to go to the doctor there after for like a week, a couple weeks because they wanted to make sure everything was okay. Damn dude, he rocked my world. It's like one of those old school TV goes out. Yeah. yeah. If he's if he's around, I hope it is most dire hour somebody kicks him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> But you gotta send a message though sometimes. Like, I remember Houston, you know, you, you get labeled the nerd because you do, like you said, you put in the work, you get the good, you know, you're on honor roll and shit. Right. And then, like, the bullies think that they can come and mess with you, right? So you gotta send, I don't know how it is today. You know, today probably it's cool to be smart. I don't know. It is. Back but in the, kids still send messages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. now it's like cyberbullying, but back in the day it was physical. So you had to, like, send a message off rip, like, look. Yeah. Rocking nigga shit. I'm not meant to be fucked with. Yeah. Right. My nickname in school was Killer Mike. One dude. <laughs> no, I'm for pause. real. Pause. <laughs> yeah, can we repeat that? My yeah. nickname was. My like, nickname you know, I'm, I'm for real. One I'm of my. I'm uh, for movie where he's Gator. <laughs> he's said, he's said a little white girl. Gator ain't gonna have it. Yeah. Gator bitches better be wearing Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. Gator bitches better be wearing Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, no, one, like, one dude, like, they for real thought I was crazy. One dude told his mother, like, look, if I die at school in, like, a school shooting or some shit, this life. dude killed me. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, But was he wrong, though? Yes. Yes, he was. <laughs> you were school but shooting. did you get bothered? No. No, no, I didn't. That's right. There it you is. gotta send an appropriate message so that no one fucks with you. Yeah, sir, Dominus. This kid got tossed off the back of a bus in, in middle school because he, he didn't get the message. This, this kid with this, he looked like a square, and people used to call him slow and dumb and all this stuff, even though he wasn't. But it was just like he had the glasses, and everybody thought they could mess with him. And one day he yoked this dude by the chest, sent him right out the back of the school bus. And nobody ever talked to him ever again. And never had trouble again. <laughs> he gave that dude the jazz from Fresh Prince. <laughs> he sent him straight out the back. I remember it to this was day, because everyone in the bus was like, whoa! I just, like, just saw him like sail straight out. Was, he, was the bus in motion? I, it, no, it was right before it was takeoff. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't in motion. It's not like we were like 60 miles an hour and this kid hit him with the fast and the yeah. furious. No. <laughs> No, he, he I was, was about right. to say, God damn, yeah. no wonder nobody fucked that kid. Nah, bro, but yeah, there were plenty of plenty of people got this shit robbed. Yeah, in high school, we had with like a security guard. Yeah, we had like he was a big guy. He was like six five, like two fifty, two seventy five. Somebody fought him. Yeah, them kids be savages. There's this kid. It was like at the, at the bus port. You see him sock the cop, and the cop eats it. And looks at him and it's like, oh no. <laughs> he said, kid trying to run it, he did not get far. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I can't imagine the sinking feeling of fucking oh, no. somebody and they look back at you like, <laughs> because you both know what just happened. You know? It's like, uh. But what if he tells you to run? He's like, run. Oh my god. That's when you shit your pants. <laughs> I remember this. My cousin got into a. We lived in the same neighborhood and he got into this cartoon style scrap with this dude. And I mean, like. It was like I, it was like at another friend's house, and it was a bunch of dudes who weren't supposed to be in the house, quote unquote. And so yeah. they got into a little bit of argument, and then eventually got into a f- straight up fist fight. My cousin was hitting them with combos in the face, and this dude just kept standing up, like not like standing up, like and getting back up, but just like proceeding to get up. And then my cousin was like, "All right, whatever." And they hit him with a two piece, both jaws, knocked him smooth out. I was like, "All that tough guy shit gonna get you knocked out, bro." He tried to act tough, like man, I don't feel that shit. Foul, foul. <laughs> Feel those. You know that triangle, triangle, forward axe? Yeah, bro. He hit him with a hot dog and then he went right down. KO. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But, uh, yeah. You know what? This has got me thinking about, like, one Damn, of the that Go ahead. Uh, let me just remember, yeah, let me reminisce on this fight story that I had. Nice. One, one of the first ones, uh, back when I was a child, I must have been, what was this, like, third grade? Yeah. 
Third grade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, so there's this kid that lived in, like, the neighborhood called Junior. He was another Latino kid. He was, like, fat and, like, big. You know, so, like, at the time, you think, like, oh, this dude's big. But, like, everybody's the same height, but he's just fat. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah. like, you're, like, this guy's gonna, like, you know, he could, like, mess you up. He was, like, a bully around. He'd, like, mess with people, push him around. And, uh, like, he did that to me, and I was, like, nah, I don't play these games. So I, like, mouth back. And then, like, word spread in elementary school, you know, that, like, Junior was gonna fight me after we got off the bus. And I was, like, and I sat in the middle of the bus, and I was, like, okay, I'm ready for this. So one of my, my friends, Marco, he's, like, a skinnier kid. He's, like, dude, Junior's gonna fight you. And I was, like, yeah. This is gonna happen. So we get off the bus, dude, and it's like a long ass run to get back to my house. And like, we square off, and like, I like punch him in the face, but like, he's not feeling anything else. He's massive. So I like, I throw a couple punches, but he's just not moving. And I'm like, okay. I threw like maybe five punches, and I realized it wasn't working. And he had his friends. It was like him and like three other smaller kids. And like, they surround me, and I just like bolt. Because this time I was like very able to run, like quick or whatever. And I just like bolt home, and they start charging me. We go up the hill, down the hill. And this is when my brain clicks. It's like, I see them following me, and like, I'm faster. But I see Junior in the front somehow, like, beating these skinnier kids, and I'm like, he's getting closer and closer. And then I see like a patch of grass. And when I, I kind of slow down, I know that he's behind me, I like slide down the grass, knowing that I'm gonna trip him up. I trip this badass. He like, all I see is when I look up is I see Junior fly above me. Like, crash, <laughs> crash, like, we're going downhill. He right. crash lands and like, does this belly flop roll, and, like, skids his knee on the concrete. Damn. And then, like, I get up, and he's just crying. And then I get scared, because he's crying, and he scraped his knee. So I bolt home, and I was like, what's going on? I was like, nothing. <laughs> That's the a next, much funny move. The next day, he sees me, he's like, he just gives me this look and just gets on the bus, doesn't say a word. A <laughs> asserted dominance. And it was the funniest thing in my mind that I thought, you know what, I'm just going to trip him up down the hill. Bro, you hit you. Because <laughs> that could have ended horribly. You hit yeah. a long roll. That could have been bad. You had a nice old Indiana Jones going. Yeah, you did. Yeah. That could have been bad for all parties involved. Quite literally, he's like The Rock. Yeah. 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 This guy. All right, yeah. next question. All right, these are Memory these memory. are straight off the weird list, so they're in no particular order. Uh, how does glue work, and how do things stick together, and what makes the glue stronger? Yep. Epoxy resins. What? Epoxides. Super glue? It's uh, epoxide, so it's basically, you know what polymers are, a bunch of stuff in a long chain. Just a bunch of molecules. So when super glue gets exposed to air, it starts to oxidize and it forms a polymer and it turns into a solid really quickly. So? So any, any surface it's touched to. But he has asked it. this question before in conversation at the Don House, but it was like... What's well, the oxygen that are grabbing onto whatever? Yeah, like his. I think his question about the yeah is that is like what is it bonding to? I yeah. thought that it was bonding to the because what surfaces it, have ridges. What's it bonding to? Yeah, so surfaces yeah. have like surfaces are uneven and have like ridges and stuff in them. So I think that it's filling in those gaps and then that's how it's bonding to it. But I don't know that for sure. That's also the reason why. But that I guess that doesn't necessarily make sense because plastics. It, you can bond glue to plastics, and plastics are relatively slick surfaces. Well, that's why glue works, is the high surface area, because it will cover all the ridges, but it's the glue that's hardening. No, yeah, we, I know it's the glue that's hardening, but by, I think the reasoning was like, how is it bonding? Is it a chemical bond, or is it a, uh, a well, mechanical think of it, bond? Think of it as like, a, as like a thin layer that, like this piece of paper is attracted to my hand, right? Right. My hand, and then it's also attracted to this right hand. And, uh, but then I would keep them together long enough the, the piece of paper hardens while being attracted to both, so they both just stick. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. have you so, ever seen one of them Spider-Man movies where he's trying to hold two things together? Yeah. It's it's basically it's that. Thing, yeah. And then yeah. he just freezes and pisses. Yeah, but yeah. Nobody's I, ever put it in dumb enough words for me to understand until now. <laughs> that's actually, yeah. Because Spider-Man is the apostle, like, attaching to the surface, and then he's like a bunch of little Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks at the piece of paper, like, look at all these little Spider-Man. Dude, that was the greatest thing. He's talking about it. At the time, I was just like, yeah. Honestly, he was like the best 
a uh, Marvel villain for a while. Tobey Maguire? No, 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 Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Doc The Dark Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, Dark Spider-Man yeah. also. <laughs> Tobey to wrecked that movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that third movie was absolutely trash. I was talking about the dude who played Doc Ock. Yeah. Spider-Man 2 was so good. Dude. It was a phenomenal movie. Yeah, it was. Movie. Like, oh Spider-Man was good, and then Spider-Man 2 ended up and I was like, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, like for a long while, Doc Ock was that villain. Yeah, I, I think the best, the, 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 the only person, I mean, the only person at that same level to me now is... Uh, what's his name who played Vulture in the new one? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Keaton yeah, yeah. He was, he's a good actor. He's a phenomenal yeah. character in that movie. Um, Speaking of Michael Keaton, call back to the eyebrows and acting. That man's eyebrow game is top notch. <laughs> Emilio Dude. Clark is the same way too. <laughs> I don't. I don't know who that is, but I know Michael Keaton is. Yeah. He's got a PhD black belt. Bruh. In eyebrows. Amelia Clark is a girl who plays the nearest from. Um, Game of Thrones, and her eyebrow game is hilariously immaculate. You know who's uh, you know who has like martial arts training and I didn't think had it. Has what? Uh, martial arts training. An actor that surprised me is uh, John Cusack. He's like a third degree judo belt. What? Yeah. Wow. That's weird. Isn't it strange? Like I saw his ass. I was like, he's actually like a third. Like, dude, you don't know about people nowadays. Like, Drago's got or uh, Dolph Lundgren has an IQ like one forty. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's an he MIT he electrical good. engineering grad, if I remember. So is Mr. Bean. Yeah, I didn't know that about Mr. Yeah, Bean. Yeah, Mr. Bean's also like really. That's good. nuts. Yes. Mr. Busy. That's yeah. the comedy. <laughs> Mr. Busy, Mr. Busy, Mr. Busy. Yeah, Mr. Busy is like an electrical engineer, like a legit one. That's hilarious. Yes, it is. All right, next one. Again, I apologize for the weirdness and obscurity of these. Different kinds and sizes of poops. What are the factors that oh go in? Oh my goodness, I knew poop was going to be introduced one of these days. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time. Nutrients, back, gut bacteria, I think are the really the only two. Why do you factors. sometimes have really thin spaghetti poops? Why do you sometimes have those giant PVC pipe poops? What you digest. Like your food, treat, yeah. Right, yeah. If your, food, if your diet is pretty consistent, they'll come out the same... Um, Almost all the time, and so it's just di- it's just bacteria in what you eat. Is it the same for me and you though? Like if we both eat the same thing, we, we don't, don't have the same, same poop. We don't have the same gut bacteria. I'm say you don't have the yeah, not, not even the close. Food. Yeah. Hmm. So we could, I guess, we could theoretically have the same kind. Of, they look the same to us, but on a molecular level, it'll be different just because we we have different bacteria. And there's also the argument that you are more bacteria than you are human. Because you, there are more bacterial cells in your body than there are uh, normal cells, if I remember right. So, yeah, your, your gut makeup definitely makes up. It, I, I think it contributes to so, your psychology, too. Is what I poop? No, <laughs> not your feces. You're, you're, uh, this, you this doodle made me feel some type of way. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, you are what you eat. Right, yeah. And there's a contribute to, there, That is real because your gut bacteria do have an influence on the way you perceive things or your brain to some degree. And so... There, there's that, but yeah, it, it's nutrients and then. All right, so that didn't go the way I expected it to. Yeah. Next, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll ignore that that ever, ever ever happened. Poop smells. Good job. A plus. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the more you know, <laughs> flies over his head. Thanks, public schools. Damn. Poop. All right, so we talked about quitting season at one point. This is a sort of a spinoff of that, and I know we've all experienced this. So experience is no sign of skill, and I actually make the argument that someone with heavy experience in one thing actually shows a lack of lack of skill because it probably means you suck at everything else. And also, how do you get experience without experience? That is not, not the golden question. How do you gain experience when you have no experience? Uh, Am re- I right? Reading. Yeah. That's the definition of reading. No, 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 no. A job, you, you apply to a job, the job says you do not have enough experience. Correct. Oh. I just graduated from college, though, with my electrical Oh, you degree. mean like a fresh job? Yeah. yeah. Or like, well, yeah, I mean, okay. like, you that's... You've done a couple of times, like, the you biggest, don't have enough experience. The biggest lie is that jobs are just like, oh, well, like, you need X number of years of experience. Which is bullshit. Right. Yeah, it was just like, no job I have ever applied to, I've had enough experience for. Correct. Right. Like, the job I have now, they were just like, yeah, you need, like, three to five years experience doing this particular thing. I've never done this thing before in my life. Yep. Yeah. It's but I'm doing it now. <laughs> it's it's a gate it's a gatekeeper to p- stop potential people from applying. It yeah. saves time because that you, you it's I've heard uh, I listened to this guy on a podcast who's like a IT professional but he has like a ton of like like 10 20 years of web dev experience or whatever and he's just like uh, job descriptions are wishless. 
Yes. Like they're not they're not looking they I mean they 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 know in their heart of hearts that they're not going to find this candidate because if you could find a candidate that had all of those things he's not going to get that he's not going to choose that job. No. Why would a candidate with 10 years of experience in these five technologies take this job for 60 70k a year, you know what I mean? Like that dude is worth 100 and uh, 200k a year. So it's like it's a wish list. Apply to the job anyway and network and oh, get I know. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's no matter what the job description, they can teach you this shit. That's the way I feel about 99.9% of jobs is that no matter what the description is, if you have at least a relative concept of the skill, you can do the job. Yes. Except or or like, you can learn at a somewhat normal rate. Right. Except program, it, programming is the only thing I feel like where you just need a couple of years or some time experience just to know what it means to program and then you can do that because – being really good at one language is almost useless, especially nowadays. Even with the interview that I had earlier today, it's like, he, what he was telling me was like, you're not going to be stuck on one thing. There's so many technologies and they move at such a quick rate that you won't be doing this. For yeah, today's day and age wants you to be, they want you to be like, no, Ruby, Rails, Python, like they want yeah, everything. Yeah, some of the projects are Ruby, some of the projects are JavaScript, everything yeah, is everything. Like they want you to be super multilingual. Right. So it's like, yeah. all right, cool. Like, but, do they want you to be super multilingual or just kind of semi-proficient in all of them? Like, be able to recognize them? Because nowadays, you don't even need to have proficiency. Yeah, you know they, what, I mean? what they want from you, you is to be able like, to build something right. in the language. Because yeah. they already have, like, a, if you're going to a big company that already has a platform built, like, you're just either updating or, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. you're not a revolutionary. Right. You're not coming in there to, to revamp the entire yeah. company. Logo. If you have a problem, you can literally Google it and then, like... That's literally... Uh, in No bullshit in the interview today, he straight up said to me... I don't expect you to get this answer right because all we do is use Stack Overflow and Google. Exactly. And I was like, yeah, and I was like, that's real. real. Let me take a quick pause to 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 sing the praises of fucking Google because man, I can't tell you how hard Google helped me get my fucking job because they were like, hey, we need you to know how to do this skill. I've never done this skill before, but I fucking Googled it, and now I'm now I'm a fucking expert in it. Now I'm a specialist. Thanks, Google. But also, I have coworkers that do not know how to Google, and it is the most aggravating, frustrating thing I have ever dealt with in my entire fucking life. Yeah. Google yeah. shut down one day, like, years back, and it. I think internet traffic dropped 40% that day. Yeah. That's all you meant. That's all I'm using. Yeah. It's, it, like, Google is, Google is no longer just a company. It is, like, a way of life. Like, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, we got to treat it, like, a, literally just like we treat other resources. That's yeah, fuck what fuck we going to do? Use Bing? I mean, I don't know. No. no. <laughs> Yahoo.com? But yeah, it's true, because I only have... Yahoo? Ooh. <laughs> Ask what, Jeeves? Boy, I just like, Jeeves. what am I going to do? Boot up an AOL CD free disc for the week? Not I need a pass. Yahoo interface so trash. You know how funny it'd be if I got a job from Yahoo do? <laughs> and I wear that shirt and then Google the rest of my problems. <laughs> why are you using our interface? You know why I'm not using it. Go back and type it. It's like, but you know what? It's, it's not true. wrong. Like, you only ask people questions because either you want the social interaction to be honest, because otherwise yeah. I ask the person a question. Now. Yeah, or like in you mean like in Yahoo, or just like in yeah. your general like work or like. To be fair, yeah. some questions are hard to find the answers to on Google. That's true. It's about phrasing. Though. Yeah, it's it definitely still, about phrasing. Yeah, even still. Well, yeah. not ex- not like not extension existential questions, you know. Yeah. Or not like highly opinionated questions or like but meaning t- of life questions, but like how do I do this? Someone's done it. Yeah. Right. Even then, though, it's still some. To most degree, I agree with you. That is true. But to some degree, you still have to have the physical, tactile experience yourself. Yeah. You can't get yeah. much reading. I mean, I would say that for like utilitarian jobs. Like, if you were like, oh, I read a book on welding, so I think I'm good. No. Nah, you're, you're not. You're not, by any stretch of the imagination, good. But you can watch the videos, you're still not. Right. Yeah. But for jobs nowadays, I, I would, like, and I, I guess it's not all utilitarian jobs, to be honest with you, because I watched videos. Mechanic. Yeah, uh, mechanic shit. Like I, like, I had, like, family that was like, don't change your shots yourself, don't do this yourself. I was like, it took me 15 minutes of watching a YouTube video to figure out how to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And save myself five, six hundred dollars in costs changing whatever in your car. I changed my window motor in my car. I was like, just because you just watch the video. So it's like, stuff like that you can get away with. In two weeks time, he's going to be like, driving off the lot. Do boom! <laughs> <laughs> don't wish that even. It's going to be a seat. You're just going to hold a steering wheel. 
<laughs> Black Panther stuff. No, but that's a lot of money you save, you know, doing things like simple, like simple things, like an alternator change or those things, a starter. That people so, get charged exuberant amount of money. Yeah, they were charging. Wow, I heard that word a long time. <laughs> yeah, they were going to charge me a thousand dollars for the cost of the world. product and the installation of my shops. Yes. And I was, and it, it took me. Granted, my my left one took was more work. It took significantly more work for my level. My right one took me all of twenty five minutes to do. Also, it's about like mechanic stuff. If you don't know anything and you look at the videos, like you won't do the you won't. Like some videos, like you know, the five minute changes or ten minutes, like you can get it done. It's just not going to be a ten minute job for you. No, you, right, right, like right. You said you don't have the tech that looks great. Right. You spend five hundred dollars for an extra couple for like of an hours. Like an afternoon, yeah, like an yeah. afternoon, like on a Sunday, which is fine, you know. Yeah. Until that spring shoots up the side of a fucking box spring. Oh, don't change it. Don't change your suspension yourself. Yeah, your cycle path. Yeah, suspensions <laughs> are another game. Like you I will die. Like, like I've told people multiple times, do not fuck with suspension. Yeah, leave your suspension like the fuck shopping, alone. You know exactly what yeah, do. but I mean, for e- almost everything else about your car except electrical, go for it. But back to the original part B of the question, I would argue that A, experience may be one of the worst judges of a employee and potential employee and B if someone has huge amounts of experience in one thing I would argue that they are less equipped as a employee because it shows that they have a lack of desire to grow yeah I agree a little bit with the second point and I agree part with the first because I don't know if it's the worst indicator of it it's a good indicator that a person could be capable of it but it's not an indicator if they're good at the job. No, like, just no. the same thing they say about, like, college. They're like, yeah, your SAT means what and what. But when you send graduates, no matter, for the most part, no matter what their SAT score is, they still ex- excel around the same levels in school. Yeah. And so it's not a very good indicator. It's just, you yeah. got you to gotta cull a herd because you can't test everybody's ability to do a job. It's true. And it's very tough to fire someone as a company. And so you... Well, it depends on where you are with that. I mean, yeah, I mean, some places are easier than other, but for the most part, it costs a lot of resources to, to let somebody go because now you have to... Because you spend money on overhead and training. And training then you and, then, someone, yeah. and then some instances or instances where you have to pay out um, whatever the, the after you lose your job. Or whatever. But your entry level, if they can fire you after they've made enough money out for you. You know what I mean? Like once you have profited the company enough money to where they own, but they how many people, back their overhead and everything. How many people really profit a company, though? No, like the company's profits. Like when you're doing that menial labor, that entry label, like you're making uh, money for the company. Correct. You you just you, you don't get you don't get the money. Right. And like once you cost once your benefit has like gone above what the cost of overhead is, then they can cut you whenever because it's like they got what they needed. Yeah. Oh, about to step out. That's what that noise was. <laughs> All right. So quick note, quick question for everyone. Also along the lines of stupid boogers. Do you wipe it or do you flick it? You wipe it. You're a wiper? I combo. There are days when I'm driving a car, I'll flick it out the window and let Mother Nature take care of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, I'm in a, if I'm here in my room, I will wipe it. I, see, for me, I think it depends on the individual booger. I think it's a case-by-case instance. Is it a wet one or a dry one? Correct. This is, this is actually, you know what? This is like, yeah. Because the wet ones, you like roll up to be able to flick it. Yeah. Which is kind of a hassle. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it depends. Yeah, this is actually a complicated question because it does depend. It does. It's kind of a case-by-case basis in some instances. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get one where like you're, like you have the congestion, but there's no actual booger in there. So you can't really wipe or flick because you can't get it out of there. Are you talking about wiping with the tissue or just like... Blow your nose and then like, yeah. Picking it and then you're like, oh, it's on my finger. Because you can't really wipe. flick a wet one. It'll just, you'll flick and then it's on your thumb and then you'll flick again and then it's on your index you know finger. <laughs> you're just Don't like, in this, in you this, can, this you loophole of rolling. hell. And then you just keep doing it and then eventually it gets dry enough right. to where you're like, all right, I've rolled you up into a pasty ball. And now Once I, you got rid like of you, yeah. you got rid of all the moisture. You got to get it on the tip. Because when you flick it, it's got to oh, have the need. least amount of contact point to where it'll have enough exit velocity. Right. right. So yeah. you know what you need though? A Lincoln. A what? A Lincoln navigator. Oh, uh, I'm just saying a Lincoln. That's, that's a fucking deep breath. Yeah. What's a Lincoln? <laughs> so you ever watch those Matthew McConaughey commercials where he's just like oh. being very stoic when yes. he's driving his uh, Lincoln cars? Well, Jim Carrey did an SNL appearance, and he was Matthew McConaughey. He's like, yeah, sometimes I just like to ride in my Lincoln and 
roll up my boogers. Yeah. How long have I been rolling his boogers when I took it out? Like, he, just, he, just, he just sits there and he's just kind of like rubbing his fingers yeah. while he's driving and you're just like, what's he doing? That's good. Uh, random tangent though. Yes. Uh, so one of my, uh, unfortunately one of my roommates in college used to pick his nose a lot. Uh, he said he used to pick it uh, while he was quote unquote asleep. What? He, he would pick his nose and then like just take the boogers and just put them on the wall oh, next to his bed. Good. Not this story. Hold <laughs> on. How do you pick your nose while you're asleep? I don't, uh, bruh. <laughs> that was the story that he decided to go with. <laughs> wow. I don't. We all knew it was bullshit, but we just was just like, hey, whatever, you know, that's just the thing you do. We're not going in your room because you're absolutely fucking lutely nasty. So you're saying he would do what with him? Like, he would pick his he would pick his nose, yeah. he would have the booger on his finger, and he would wipe it on the oh, wall. Oh, he was making a mural. He was making a Mona Lisa out of <laughs> boogers. <laughs> so by the end of the semester, he'd have this mosaic or like a connect the dots type of situation. He's probably leaving you coded messages. You needed to connect the boogers. <laughs> and, and then you would be like, oh shit. It's part of the Illuminati. He, yeah. he may have been. You, you just know. missed out. Like, yeah, I missed out because I just, nah. There was a coded message. But shout out, shout out to the fucking custodian that cleaned up when he, oh. he moved out because there was just boogers on the fucking wall and my man went in there with a fucking smile and a chisel and got all them boogers off that wall. Oh, dude. These will do fine in my collection. You know what that reminds me of? Like, <laughs> those, like those posts of six legs all the pieces of gum on it? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Except the gum is boogers. Exactly. That shit was absolutely disgusting. And shout out to me for cleaning up that puka burn. Let's not talk about the puka burn night. Actually, it was a pretty good night. Okay, so. Puka burn! The context of the story. Uh, when we all lived together, at some point, I don't know how, the puka was introduced into the dorm room, which subsequently caused large burn holes in the carpet floor. Well, let me let me emphasize that we've gone out drinking and came back heavily to continue drinking and smoking the hookah. And once we did light the hookah, we were passing it around like it was a peach pipe. Like it was a French whore. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus Christ! No, okay, but no one passes. Whoa. Okay, fine. All right, you guys don't get out much. <laughs> right? <laughs> you yeah, look at the French ass. If you if you ever become bums, go to France. There it is. Yes, squatting bums. Yes. Can, all right. Yeah. Sorry. Hookah. Yes, the hookah was passed like quote quote peace pipe. Right. And which subsequently caused someone like I assume I went to bed at that point. Someone dropped a lump of coal on the floor or something. Yes. Yes. Which caused large burn holes. I think yes. I was dope. Possibly. Yes, but also to be fair, the room was very smoky. And yeah. Easy. yeah. Yeah. And we were drinking like shots of one fifty one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. The, that's very flammable. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Dropping. Yeah. It was a fucking wild night. Well, we were. What else was playing in the background? Was it some music that was popping at the time? Was playing in the background, and everybody was just chilling, vibing. It, it was, was a cool night. That was, it was towards the end of college. Night. Yeah. Was a very cool night. So the follow up to that story is that those burns were never taken yes. care of or yes. fixed. Uh, I was the last one there that semester and realized that we had not done anything about it and we were going to lose our security deposit, so I had to I was, undo our entire carpet floor I, by myself. I'm going to be honest with you, I gave up on the security deposit when I saw that burn mark, so that's why, <laughs> that's why I left. Yeah. I said, fuck it. Well, <laughs> but see, the thing was, I didn't enjoy it. I went to sleep. I didn't even participate in the hookah, but yet I cleaned it up. Yeah. You should have let it go. The real that. MVP. <laughs> But thanks for saving us the security. Thanks for holding that L, though. Yeah, <laughs> man. Dude, he had to like peel off a section of carpet underneath the sofa to cover up the burn mark <laughs> that was in the middle of the living room. I just feel bad for the people who lost it that lost their security deposit after, after us. us. Well, that's their fault. You know, life sucks. Throws yeah. curveballs. True that. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, let's do. How terrifying would the world be if Pokemon were real? Because some of those Pokemon are the size of fucking buildings. I mean, never mind. In the ones. intro, Tentacruel bust down the building. Correct. So that would be very terrifying. Uh, yeah, never mind the ones that are fucking, like, enormous. Like, there are... These are creatures that use, like, powers. Yeah. Yeah, like... And there's, like, 700 of these no, types that. of creatures. No, no, OG. Oh, this, if we're doing the original 150, 151... I'm still That's panicking. still terrifying. Yeah, 
Like I'm not a trying to catch a Cheerios nigga. I'm good. I'm not trying to catch a bee drill in summer, bro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking, about a world where, dude, we're talking about a world where B drills exist. But free health care. True. But you pay like ten thousand dollars for a lemonade. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> and you also pay five thousand dollars for And there's for only like one bicycle you can get. Which in all fairness, after every battle you win like three thousand uh Dude, we can't deal with animals today. I'm yeah. just saying, we can't work with these animals today. He's right. We can't yeah. even work with animals that don't have powers. Imagine right. working with animals that yeah. do. Imagine imagine bees with javelins. Nigga, yeah. So fuck yeah, yeah for those of you who are listening who don't know about Pokemon, we'll describe it a little bit for you. There, there's no need to. The whole world knows what a Pokemon is. Who the fuck doesn't know what a Pokemon is? Yeah, if you don't know about Pokemon, turn this podcast off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waste your time. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but it's true. I mean, a couple of them would be cool to have, like you know, yeah, you know, a fire breathing lizard would be all right. So we came on this until, until, until you end up in the wrong person's yard, and the next thing you know, you get turned into fucking Korean rules port. <laughs> <laughs> would, would the giant like a giant rock onyx, onyx. Yeah. be scarier, or would a tiny little vile plume with all that poison inside of it be scarier? Bro, they're both scared. You're gonna die. Yeah, one, I would one, rather like, run into a vile plume than you know a what? fucking onyx. I'll take yeah. the onyx, man. The onyx is a nice, quick, like, crush death. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But at least you might be able to get away from the vile. I, I imagine no. you live in a world where there's a there's an anti anti venom to whatever that shit. No produces. way. That, that's like twenty black mamas at once. And <laughs> that show wasn't that crazy. In the show, like, didn't one of the Ash got poisoned by one, and it wasn't like well, a this death. is a cartoon, man. I just taking lightning bolts to get lit off, lit on fire. That's yeah. true. Yeah. What is it? You two turned his ass to stone. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. Yeah. Right enough. And then Pokemon tears brought about. Also, like, this is, this is you're living life. in a world with Mewtwo. I'm good. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm good. So what's gonna happen is Pikachu's gonna hit you with the 1.21 gigawatts to send you back to the future. Yeah, bro. <laughs> He's sending you back to our reality where they don't exist. Correct. That wasn't worth it at all. I just go around with like a lightning stone or thunder. What was it called? The, the thunder, lightning thunder, stone. Thunder stone yeah. and just touch all the Pikachu's with it. <laughs> what does that do? You make them right and, and they can't go back. Are they angry as shit though? But, not, but now they're bigger and stronger. Like, like right don't, don't forget, I, I wait, right are fucking savage. How many right do you think you could touch before <laughs> <laughs> before you just spontaneously combust from the voltage? I think you get through the first one before he goes, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, if you forget, right are fucking mean. And they like, are. Yeah. They have angry eyes. Yeah, and they're strong. Who is the crocodile hunter that world? Like, there's gotta be somebody in that world that's Steve like, Irwin, oh, yeah, there's a Steve Irwin, yeah. Oh, man, oh. oof. Yeah, there's definitely a Steve it's, Irwin it's, out it's, there. it's one of them fucking professors. It'd be, you live in a world with fucking Onyx and Golo. Uh, bruh. I'm good. Bruh, let's talk about Muck real quick. Yes. <laughs> so what, are you, what are you doing, Muck? Dude, Muck has got the people sick in the in the cartoon. Muck right? is Muck is the fucking living embodiment of like the bubonic plague. No, he's, he's like a sludge bomb. He's yeah. the elephant foot in Chernobyl, bro. Brought to life. <laughs> ah. yeah, I'm good. It's, Dude, it's a the, sentient radiation. It, it was what you're dealing. How with. about those electric ball ones? Though? What was it electro? Electro? Oh yeah, that blow up. Matt, Matt. Yeah, the blow professionally. Up. Nah, I'm good. Dog. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll up next to you real quick. It's self combust. How, bro, that, that, how that, is that a Pokemon like? Pokemon are like animals, but that was just like it was ball, big balls. It's yeah. all metal. In all yeah. fairness, they had like you live in a world where there's Porygon, which was a virtual Pokemon that actually was able. to They were buy. coming up. They were losing ideas. Yeah, they ran out of. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, how, about, uh, how about Krabby though? Going to King Crab? Nigga, a King Crab? A King the fuck out of there, bro. Pause though. Yeah, you dealing with what? That right claw is a hippo job, bro. What if it moves like claw that shit is half Boltron, bro? I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I like Elvin with Dana Jinx. Jinx slick, a slick thick. She got no eyes or no face. She ain't got no face. She got lip. And then it would just be a Mr. Mind the whole time. Catfish. Yeah, Damn. <laughs> I got magic card. Wait, I walked up and it was a gold. Did you steal Mr. Popo? <laughs> oh my god. Which version? That offspring <laughs> the is the original version. version. That Bruh. offspring is so scary. Fuck both of them. In Japan's interpretation of the first people that people. Black Mike gets up to say? No, I was just gonna say, uh. Fuck, I forgot. Uh. <laughs> hey, but if I could meet another design, that'd be kind of cool. I'm just saying. Yes. What's up, watches your brain? Oh, look, I'd be okay with it. If, if, if I, I could have, would not be cool. In if real I life. could have, if I could have a Pokemon, just 
that wouldn't fuck me over, I would have an Alakazam. Oh, oh yeah. if it wouldn't fuck you over, yeah, I would choose Alakazam. Oh I would no, have to choose Alakazam. I'm Gengar. I choose Gengar. That's more my speed. Yes, Gengar. <laughs> if you if 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 you knew like it couldn't ruin you, yeah, Gengar. Uh, Gengar honestly over an Alakazam because Psychic. Uh, ghost, you know what I mean? Well, back then, Ghost was just as strong as Psychic. Yeah, yeah both of them could take each other they out. Were, yeah, they were both super effective against each other, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. I'll do whatever you want. I'm going to ride my Gyarados through the sky. <laughs> yeah, he was a flying type back then. I'm going to ride a dragon through the sky like a Psycho. Yeah, or no, he was it. Dragon air? Yes. Yeah, he was flying because he just was, was flying. Pidgey could fly, right? You do that too. <laughs> He's on the bottom, holding the bottom of the leg, with this other bite. The thing you could still use it if they fail. Yeah, they're looking for Pidgeot. All right, that's true. Keeping with the Pokemon theme, what Pokemon would you choose out of the three stars? Go, Nick. Out of the Oh, I'm the uh, Charmander. Charmander. Yeah, Charmander. Nope. You gotta go Charmander. Yeah, Charmander. Yeah, that's unanimous, man. That's Charmander. I'm going Bulbasaur. I want. <laughs> You were fucking lame, bro. I, mean, I wish you told me that when I first met you, bro. <laughs> this conversation wouldn't have gone beyond. I'd be like, all right, Eddie, have a good one. No, you know what? And I sorted you in the aerial bucket. No, and everybody, walked off. everybody defaults to like Charmander. It's easy, you know. You guys choose the default setting. Some of us like to work for things, you know. I'm you just saying. Some of us like to lose at the first fight. <laughs> that's like right, yeah. That's well, like unless you have a B store. That's, like, that's like that's like that's dead ass like Star Fox and everybody's sailing by in their ships <laughs> and you on the ground in the tank. <laughs> I'm good, dog. Uh, like save me to the sky. <laughs> this slippy ass nigga. You slippy, you slippy. <laughs> Watch out, I'm gonna hit you with my People mind. underestimate Venusaur though, but like once he's Venusaur, he still sucks. He's washing that Blastoise out the way. And the funny thing is that Venusaur is nice, but also he, like, I'm thinking about the fact that you're not always battling, so you have to spend time with these Pokemon. I would rather have a fucking Charizard chilling at my house. Roast my marshmallows on the table? Yeah. Venusaur is a nice table. Or a Blastoise. I, if you had said Blastoise, because I was equally between the yeah, two. Because yeah, a Blastoise yeah, yeah. and you live near the beach or something, whoo! That Blastoise would be a ton of fun. But now, the, the yeah, the only the, like there are only two answers to that that, yes. that question. <laughs> <laughs> only Charmander is Squirtle, because like don't get me wrong, I love Charizard, but if I mean like, if you said, hey, I have a turtle with cannons in his back that shoots fucking like uh, hydro Blast pump. Blastoise is pretty cool. You know what? I'd be down with that. Blastoise rise out. He a ninja turtle with guns. <laughs> <laughs> True. Sign me up. He's, he's Bowser with water cannons. Sign me <laughs> water up. Water Bowser. Yeah, water Bowser, man. I just want to unleash a solar beam on somebody's own. And that's that's cool. You not, not, not twenty minutes of our fight getting that solar beam together while I hit you with five fire blasts. That man shit. <laughs> You trying to do the Pokemon one. equivalent of the spirit bomb? Yeah, bro. That'd be your drink. It's a cloudy you know, day out. You know, you know it's a cloudy day out and you can't use your Pokemon. Massive. Your Pokemon is solar power, bro. I'm good. <laughs> nah, man. I don't want no Tesla fucking Pokemon. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, man. You got the TI-83 of Pokemon, bro. <laughs> it's just solar powered ass Pokemon. Sign me up for something that I could use. The only negative about Charizard though is if that if you hit him with that uh with that scruff McGruff and take that tail out, then they can go. So you gotta protect that tail fire for, at all costs. You know what? Costs. You bring up a good point, but if I had, if I had a Venusaur, I'd live by the beach then, because you know you get that protection against Charizard, and if a Blastoise shows up, it's fine. But then look at all the stipulations you gotta add to your life to enjoy a Venusaur. What do you I mean? mean? I'm still living on the beach like Blastoise. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta like add extra constraints to to yourself. When you when you have a Charizard, you just chill. Wherever you want to go, you just go. Charizard, take me to wherever. And he's just like, all right, wherever that they is. They also hop on the back and I'm flying like never ending story. Yeah! Yeah, sailing through the got his pros and cons. Now, if you, could pick, if you had to pick, who would your top three be? Period. Across the 150. You had to give me that. I already got it. I got it. Go for it. Got it off right. It'd be a Snorlax. Hey. It'd be a Gengar. Hey. And it'd be a Lapras. Yeah, that's not a bad squad at all. I, I rock with that squad. So the question, what do you base? Do you base off fighting or do you base off just life? It, you would have to just live. You, it would be fighting and life. You, it would be like Pokemon. Like 90% of your time is just being with them, but then you have the 10% where you're actually in battle. You can probably ride Gengar in the sky. Can you ride a Gengar? You can. Or? Well, Ash good. did it, but he didn't ride it. He, it basically took his soul out of his body and he ruled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can get on the Gengar. It's big enough. Yeah, but isn't that ghost you just fall through? I feel like, I mean, he has control. I think I would do Arcanine. Oh, Arcanine's good with Fire Dog? Um, yeah, oh, of course. Because you have to live with them, so it's like Arcanine for the land-based. I would do maybe 
don't know, because I want to mix the types up. I think I would do Lapras for the water, maybe. Or Gyarados. Hell no, I'd do Gyarados. Yep. Uh, Gyarados, Arcanine, and who would my last one be? Don't mix it up with somebody just for the... You gotta have somebody small to kind of... You gotta look like a small, medium, and large combo. Caterpie. Jesus. <laughs> That'd be a hilarious stat. <laughs> I, what are you? Two, what are you three metapod. Metapod. Like, Two Gyaradoses and a Metapod. <laughs> no, no, people will be so confused by you. And no legend, so no Mewtwo or no, no. Uh, yeah, no, uh, no yeah, none of the legendaries. Uh, um, who would my last be? Hmm. Got a water, got a fire. Who could fill that last stack? Y'all go ahead while I figure that out. Dude, I got a secondary stack that could also be interesting. Run it back. Uh, a Magmar. What? Uh, That's fire. No, I Magmar? totally forgot about Magmar. Don't yes. forget about Magmar. Boy. Got it, bro. Yeah, Magmar I totally gets forgot. Electabuzz? Yes. So your two are Electabuzz, Magmar, and who? And let's see, who'd be the third one? I'm still trying to decide between Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. Yeah, I was thinking about like a, a Would you rather get Jod or Kit? Jod. Yeah. The thing is, both like both Electabuzz and like Magmar are already tough enough, and Nido Nido King. I think I do Chansey. Chansey's not a bad move because you like <laughs> you like say for instance you're in a triple stack you're in a triple stack battle right? She healing the rest of the squad. She the mercy just click. To be fair, on Sanchez's point, that Electabuzz, he's power of the world now. He's now king. Yeah, he has, he has all the power. In the world where every man is blind, the one eyed man is key. Yeah, those guys are like heavy hitters. Like, it'd be that, those guys and yeah, they, Magmar. Uh, don't forget that Magmar Charizard battle back in the How could kids. you? That is that the Pokemon the, fight. That is, that is the fight of that generation. That is the Gara Rock Lee of Pokemon. Yes, it is. That so fight was good. crazy as a kid. You know what? No, nah, switch out that last one. But it'd be Electabuzz, Magmar, and uh, Scyther. Well played. I was waiting yeah. to see who would say that first. It's Scyther. 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 I don't know if I would want to live with a Scyther. But do you want to do Scyther or Kabutops? They both have the sweet sword arm. I would definitely do Kabutops over Scyther. Yeah, that's like, I just didn't include him because, you know, he's an ancient boss. Awesome. Yeah, let yeah. me go back to the original stack to see who I'm missing because it's been such a long time. Yeah. yeah this, this conversation is getting weird. It, it, yeah. well, yeah. I mean, like, like Bar- the podcast no. is officially over. We just going through some. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just naming all yeah. the Pokemon. That'd be cool. Here's so right. we'll wrap it up. We'll all right, yeah, we'll catch you guys next week. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we kind of we kind of went off on the tangent. This one, it's been a good one. That's this is what we do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So keep enjoying the weekend and uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Yeah, follow yeah. us on Twitter. Uh, Pumper YouTube, Nick, Mr. Pumper Nickel P Podcast. Yeah, just Google Pumper Nickel Podcast. Yeah, you if you find just us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, off rip. So yeah, go yeah. for it. All right, y'all have a great weekend.